All right, let's do a problem. Um, we have a hockey puck given an, it has an initial velocity somehow, so someone slapped it with a stick and it's going 20 meters per second. We know that it travels 115 meters and then comes to a stop. Find the coefficient of kinetic friction between the puck and the ice. All right, well, this seems like it's going to deal with a little bit of kinematics, right? We got a, a change in position. We have, in other words, a displacement. We have a change in velocity, right? 20 to 0 meters per second. And they want us to know what caused it. The, what's the frictional force? Well, what's not the frictional force. What's the coefficient of friction that we get from the frictional force? Remember, the frictional force is equal to mu k times the normal force. If I started out there, that makes me go, oh, you know what? I think I need a free body diagram to figure out what the normal force is first. Um, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, I'm just going to put my mass center right here. We have an mg pointed down <coughs> and a normal force pointed up. <coughs> If this had motion going to the right in the positive x direction, call this positive x, then friction would be opposing that motion. Friction is going to be going in this direction, so the force of kinetic friction to the left, causing us to slow down in this case, to a stop, right? Comes to a to rest or to a stop. All right, we did our free body diagram directly on there. Um, that'll work for us. We don't have too many forces. Just remember if you have a lot of forces, go ahead and turn this into mg normal force. Just represent it as a point mass and the force of kinetic friction. So a proper free body diagram would look like this. Um, I just like drawing on the picture if it, if it works. Um, okay, so we need to find mu, and we're going to have to use that formula and some kinematics afterwards. Well, let's see what we can do. If I sum the forces in the x direction, um, all I have is the force of kinetic friction, and it's going to the left. That equals some mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Alright, um, we definitely have an acceleration. That's what's slowing us down and coming to a rest. So don't cancel that out. This is an equation we will hold on to right here. Um, let's sum the forces in the y direction. We're going to need that normal force, so that's how we're going to get it. We have a normal force going up a minus mg going down, and that's going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y. Now it does not come off the surface, so we can say that that's zero, and we find out that the normal force is equal to mass times gravity, or the acceleration due to gravity. Alright, um, we can substitute this right here into our friction equation or sorry this and this so let's call this equation two this would be equation three putting all those together um, we get a minus mu k times the normal force is equal to a minus mu k mg and right, that's this equation going into there. And we can reduce that one step further. Or sorry, that's all equal to mass times the acceleration in the x. So that's what we get. Cancel our masses, and we find out that the acceleration in the x direction is minus mu k times gravity. Mass is canceled. It's always pretty interesting. Um, and uh, note the negative sign. The negative sign is slowing us down. 
All right, we're not done. Um, we want to know it went 115 meters, and it had a initial velocity of 100, of 20 meters per second, and a B final of zero meters per second. So let's let's work with that. Let's do some kinematics. Um, well. We could use B final squared is equal to B naught squared because we're given no time at all, right? They just gave us the displacement and the velocities. Um, that's equal to 2 times the acceleration in the x direction times delta x. Well, we know delta x. We can substitute our acceleration in. and we know that the final velocity went to zero. So I'm going to get zero is equal to um, uh, V naught squared plus two times the acceleration in the x direction Nope, sorry. If I substitute that in there, I get a minus 2 times mu k times gravity times our delta x. All right, we know delta x was the 115. We have our initial velocity. We have, that's just a constant, and we know this is 9 point, or negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Well, looks like we have it all. Um, we can extract mu k. Little algebra gives us mu k is equal to v naught squared over 2 times gravity times delta x. And plugging in all our numbers, we'd have a 20, sorry, initial velocity squared. Um, then 2 times 9.81 times 115. And yeah, remember this is a positive in this equation generally. We get the sign from our force. Um, I misspoke earlier, sorry. Uh, this ends up being a mu equal to 0.177. And remember I told you mu ranges from 0 to 1 typically. Uh, that's a, a pretty low mu, so this is a hockey puck on ice. Um, we can go lower than that. Teflon is pretty dang low. Uh, just some some examples real quick. Uh, rubber on steel. Maybe like a belt going around a steel pulley in your vehicle as a 0.74 range, aluminum on steel has about 0.6, um, wood on wood is around the 0.25 to 0.5 range, so it's got a decent range. Depends on the wood, right? Depends on how rough it is. But we get things like Teflon, Teflon on Teflon. Teflon's made by DuPont, or was patented and created by DuPont. If we have those two, some of the most frictionless surfaces in the world um, on each other, we get a 0.004. This is very small. Teflon is damn near frictionless. Where ice on ice, ends up being around 0.1. So the ice on rubber ended up being a little bit bigger than ice on ice. So that makes sense. Um, hockey pucks made out of hard rubber and if you've ever tried drawing driving on ice you know it's horrible and if the coefficient of friction is pretty small. Alright, there you go.